Hi, I'm Al, and today I'm going to talk about the differences in a mechanical fuel pump versus an electric fuel pump. So first, let me just quickly go over the three basic designs that I have here in front of me. I have here, this is an electric in-tank fuel pump, and this entire unit sits in the fuel tank of your vehicle or the fuel cell. And this small little fuel pump sits at the bottom of this bracket, and it sucks the fuel up and pushes it up towards the front of your car to the engine. This here is an external electric fuel pump. It sits outside of the fuel tank, obviously, on a frame rail or some other body, secure body panel, and it sucks the fuel from the bottom of your fuel cell or fuel tank and pushes it up towards the engine. And this is a mechanical fuel pump. It sits right here on the side of the engine block, and it actually draws the fuel out of the bottom of the tank or the fuel cell and feeds your engine. Now, uh, a few little pointers that I want to point out in these different designs is that electric fuel pumps, they're pusher pumps. So they have to sit either in the fuel cell or real close to the fuel cell and they will push the fuel towards the engine where the mechanical fuel pump is a puller and it is able to pull or draw the fuel out of the fuel cell and push it a short ways to the engine. So before I dive into these different types of fuel pumps, first thing I want to cover is a little bit of vocabulary. Two words that I'm going to be, or two phrases that I'm going to be using quite often is PSI and GPH. PSI, standing for pounds per square inch, is more or less the speed in which fuel is being delivered to your carburetor or your fuel injected engine. GPH is gallons per hour, and that's the volume of fuel that's going to be delivered to your carburetor or your fuel injected engine. Now, let's talk about the mechanical fuel pump. Like I mentioned before, the mechanical fuel pump is a puller type pump. It pulls fuel from your fuel cell or gas tank, and it draws it in to the fuel pump as it sits right here on the side of the engine block and pushes it right up towards the carburetor that's going to be sitting on top of your engine. Now I say carburetor because these are generally designed for carbureted applications. They run at a lower PSI and that's ideal for carburetors because you don't want to go overflowing your, your fuel bowls or blowing your needle and seat. Now you may ask what PSI should I be looking for? Well, it kind of depends on the carburetor and what the carburetor likes and what kind of tuning you have. Generally, carburetors run between 4 and 6 PSI, and we have a lot of fuel pumps at summitracing.com that are perfect right in between that range. Now, if you happen to find yourself buying a fuel pump for the future that may be a little strong for your carburetor and what you have running, what you can do is purchase a fuel pressure regulator, put that in between the fuel pump and your carburetor, run a return line, from the regulator back to your fuel cell and you can tune it using one of these dials to know exactly how much PSI you're delivering directly to your carburetor. Some symptoms of having too much PSI is like I mentioned having fuel flowing out of your carburetor under casual driving conditions uh, not something where you're going up a hill or, or steep incline or anything like that just casual driving conditions, you find fuel flowing out of your, your fuel bowls. You don't want that happening because it may hit your headers, end up causing a fire. Too little PSI or having your, your mechanical fuel pump regulated too much, you're going to notice that, again, under casual driving conditions, your bowl just about empties, and that's where you may want to watch Norm's Quick Flick video about properly tuning your float and needle and seat, or you may want to increase your fuel pressure from your mechanical fuel pump. What about electrical fuel pumps? Now, electrical fuel pumps, like I mentioned before, they are pusher type fuel pumps. So you need to make sure that these sit as close to your fuel source as possible. You don't want to go mounting this on the firewall because you're going to end up damaging the fuel pump. 
these types of fuel pumps, they also need to always have fuel going to them. So you don't want to go running your fuel cell completely dry after a run or a, as you're casually driving. The fuel inside your fuel tank actually cools as well as lubricates these fuel pumps. Now, you can use an electrical fuel pump for a carbureted application. There are electric fuel pumps out there designed to run at low PSI, so that way you're not blowing your needle and seed or anything like that. But if you do get a stronger fuel pump, what you can do, again, like I mentioned, is run a fuel pressure regulator. You have your fuel pump, then your fuel pressure regulator, and you put your return line back to your tank, and you put the outline to your carburetor. Now, a question you may ask is, how much PSI and how much gallons per hour do I need for a fuel-injected engine? Well, that really depends on the type of injectors, the size of the engine, and the type of horsepower that you're looking to get out of that engine combination. And for that, I really encourage you to contact our tech line, talk to them about what you have, what you're looking to do, and we'll be able to correctly dial in the fuel pump that's going to be perfect for your application. Now, if you have any other questions or comments about fuel pumps, fuel systems, I encourage you to leave a question in the comments section below. Watch our other quick flick videos, including the one on how to properly put AN fittings on the end of braided hose lines, because that'll help a lot with your plumbing. And make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on our latest quick flicks videos. Thanks for watching.